This question asks, for what values of h is the given matrix representative of a consistent system of equations? What does that mean? Well, remember that if we assume this is an augmented matrix, then that means that the top row here represents 1x1 plus 4x2 equals negative 5, and this bottom row is 3x1 plus hx2 equals negative 15. And what we need to try to do is see if when we go to solve this or reduce the system, uh, system of equations embedded in this matrix into row echelon form, we need to check and see if anything like this happens. You know, stuff's going on and we have a row of zeros and then a non-zero number. And basically anything can be happening, happening everywhere else in the matrix. If that happens, that's a problem. Because if all the coefficients on my variables are 0, this would be 0x1, 0x2, plus however many I have, up to 0xn, and that equals a non-zero number, well, this is just 0 plus 0 plus 0 equals a number. So this is the one case where I, I know I have an inconsistent system of equations in my, in my matrix, because there's no way I can just add up 0 and get a non-zero number. So I'm going to just reduce this as much as I can, but I'm keeping an eye out for something of this form because that would give me a problem. OK. Well, first of all, I want to get rid of all of the values below the upper left position. In other words, I want to make this a pivot column. And so what I will do is I will multiply row 1 by negative 3, and I will add it to row 2. Why am I doing that? Well, if I multiply row 1 by negative 3, notice 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. And when I add that to 3, I get 0. As far as for what happens everywhere else, I'm just going to deal with that as it happens. So leaving the top alone, I have 1, 4, negative 5. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, plus 3 is 0. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. And when I add that to h, I get h minus 12. And then negative 3 times negative 5 would be a positive 15. And when I add that to negative 15, I get 0. OK, so look at what I have here in this bottom row. I have that x2 times h minus 12 is equal to 0. So really, when I'm thinking about the values that h could be, as far as what's relevant, I want to think, well, there's two cases, case 1 h minus 12 could equal 0. Well, what happens then? If h minus 12 equals 0, then this is x2 times 0 equals 0, which means I have the equation 0 equals 0. And this is OK. This isn't the case over here where I've got 0 equals a number which is not 0, because that would be the issue. 0 equals 3. That's never true. But here I have 0 equals 0. Not a problem at all. And then if I look at this, that means that x2 is a free variable. I would have a row of zeros here. And then I can just solve this. x1 would equal negative 4x2 minus 5. And I could plug in whatever values I wanted if h minus 12 is 0. So that's not a problem at all. Well, case 2, what if h minus 12 does not equal 0? Well, then I have this right here. But if h minus 12 is not 0, then it's safe to divide by it. So I could solve the equation x2 times h minus 12 by dividing both sides of this. h minus 12 equals 0 over h minus 12. Those would cancel, again, because they're not 0. That's what we're assuming here. So I would have x2 equals 0. 0 over something not 0 is just 0. And so now in this case, x2 isn't free. x2 is very specifically the value 0. But now notice, I know what x2 is. I can plug it in here and solve for x1. So in both cases, when h minus 12 is 0, I have a consistent system of equations. And when h minus 12 is not 0, I still have a consistent systems of system of equations. So in this case, this is consistent. for all h, as long as h is a real number. And that is this example.